Hi, it's Mrs. Jones and welcome to my YouTube channel. It's a beautiful day here close to the end of March in Florida and today I wanted to talk to you about five gardening no's and five gardening no's. The first gardening no is to know your planting zone. Um, your planting zone tells you what types of plants are most likely to thrive in your area based on the climate and the last expected frost. All you have to do is go to Google and type in plant zone or plant hardiness zone and that will give you your information. It's usually a number from 1 to 13 and there might be an A or B next to it. In the Caribbean it ranges from 11 to 13 from north to south and in Europe it's on the same uh, longitude as the US. The second no is to know your soil type. Now, do you have sandy soil or clay soil, silt, is it rocky, loamy? Now, just because you have poor nutrient soil doesn't mean you can't amend it, a uh, few modifications to make it favorable for your fruits and vegetables to plant. Sure, what type of soil is best for your fruits and vegetables? I could recommend um, container gardening for the first time until you're able to build up your soil that will work for your garden. The third no is to know what to plant based on the time of year. Each month there are recommendations for crops that you can plant. Just because it's springtime, doesn't mean you can just go in there and put everything out. Um, you can see uh, at the back of seed packets, it recommends what time of year to plant them and they give a, a broad range. So don't think that just because you missed the first month doesn't mean you can't plant anything at all. The third no is to know your available sun exposure. Are you new to the place that you will be planting? Then you may not know the sun trend throughout the year. Most fruiting vegetables need a lot of sun. I've got things going in my face. Um, most fruiting vegetables need a lot of sun, and some leafy vegetables can tolerate less sun, like lettuce and kale and cabbage. So you have to know where you're going to put your crops based on those sun trends. Again, if you don't know what that is, try container gardening so you can move your plants around until the next season where you'll know where your sun is going to be the most. The fifth no is to know about your plants that you're going to be planting. Do some research on what you want to plant. Will you be trying it from seeds or seedlings? Do you know if it will be direct sow into the ground or can you start it indoors and then transfer it to the ground? Some plants do not like to be transferred. So you have to do a little bit of research. Nothing's wrong with experimenting from time to time, but to save yourself some money, um, it's best to just do some reading before you decide what you're going to plant. The same way I'm doing some research to bring you some tips and from my experience too. Um, the first no <laughs> is do not go big or go home mentality. If it's your first time or just a second time, start small. That's okay. You want to probably try some container gardening, try some easy crops such as lettuce or tomatoes, um, and then build from there. You will learn a lot the first few times about what works in your garden, and then the next time you can improve on it. The next no is no comparing yourself to other gardeners. You're starting out. The best I can tell you is to take the tips and advice from other gardeners and use that to build your own garden. But don't look at someone who's been doing it for years and think, oh, 
I'm never going to be able to get there or I can do that. Neither way works. Just try it your way. Do your research. And um, I think that would be my best advice for that. The fourth no is no underwatering or overwatering. Some plants um, like water. Others, not so much. Again, do your research. It's best to give fruiting plants a little more water. Uh, green leafy vegetables can tolerate a lot more water, but rooting vegetables and um, peas and beans, they tolerate um, less water. Overwatering can also drain the nutrients from your soil. So please do not overwater. Um, it also affords your plants deeper and stronger roots. If you give them a little less water, maybe two to three times a week, initially when you just plant them, you probably need to water them every day. But as they get bigger, um, give them a little less water and observe your plants. If you see that they're wilting or if it's a hot day, give them a little extra water and vice versa. If they're doing well, don't water. Hold back until you see that they need that water. And the fifth no is no pesticides that will kill your pollinators. There are annoying insects that you have to deal with, but if you spray things that will deter the beneficial bees and insects and even butterflies, then you'll get no fruit. All your flowers will just die. So consider using organic products or neem or um, organize your plants with natural um, co-planting methods and natural pest deterrents that will encourage the beneficial insects to come into your garden and pollinate. And the text that I have for you today is from Proverbs 1 verse 5. And it says, A wise man will hear and increase in learning, and a man of understanding will acquire wise counsel. So these are just a few things that I recommend to you. Please feel free to do your own research and add to your knowledge base. And if you have more to share with me, please add a comment at the bottom. I hope you like and subscribe and share my video and have a blessed day. Bye-bye.